measuring angles in both degrees and radians. So when we're doing trigonometry now, we have learned or remembered that we've used sine, cos, and tan, and we've had a good revision about that business, but now we're going to introduce you to a new form of measuring angles. From this point on, we tend to not use degrees very much. We tend to use a measure called a radian. So what does a radian mean? Here we go, here is a circle being made. There is the radius r. Now if I take out the r, just pull it out from there, and what I'm doing is I'm bending it around the circle, and then I connect to the center, the angle in between is one radian. So if I was to take that section and move it around, there's two radians, and then move it again, there's three, and you notice there's a little gap? Well, of course, that's three and a bit radians, or pi radians. So 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. So that is the definition of where a radian comes from. So to convert between degrees and radians, we use these formulae. To get from degrees to radians, we simply multiply the degrees by pi over 180. And to get from radians back into degrees, we just need to multiply it by 180 over pi. The way I tend to remember between the two is that radians tend to have a pi in them somewhere, so I'll need to times it by pi, whereas degrees don't usually have the letter pi anywhere in them, so I need to divide it out. You'll see what I mean when we do a few of these examples. Now we've got our right angle triangles. Now I have gone and extracted that same right angle triangle that we dealt in the previous video, which was made from a square. So in case you had forgotten, this particular triangle has one, a side, a height of one unit and a base of one unit. And using Pythagoras, we're able to identify that the hypotenuse is a root two. And then we're able to identify that the angles in here are 45 degrees. And the reason is, is because it's half of a square. Those little corners that we chopped out were 90 degrees. We cut it in half and there they were 45. So now what we need to do is we need to go and turn this into radians. So 45 degrees times by, and we need to use the formula pi over 180, will tell us how many radians there are. Now, because I like to work smarter, not harder generally, I will go and do some cancelling out. How many times can 45 go into 180? So uh, 45 goes into 90 twice, 90 goes into 180 twice. So therefore 45 must go into 180 four times. So we'll go once, four times, and so this is equal to da, 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 pi over four. Now, when we usually write radians, honestly, we don't necessarily keep the uh, units of measurement. We don't necessarily have a little symbol like we do with degrees. Often, we just assume that if there's a pi involved, it is quite likely to be a radian. However, if you like to be ultra, 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 extra, especially careful, you put a little c at the top there, and that is radians. That's the little symbol that we use. Now, with this right angle triangle that has a height of 1 and it has a uh, hypotenuse of 2, we calculated using Pythagoras in the previous video that this is going to have a base of root 3. We also discovered in our previous video when we used our knowledge of trigonometry what the angles on the inside were. This one here was 30 degrees and this one here was 60 degrees. So now we need to convert them into radians. So 30 times pi over 180 is equal to, so we can go and cancel out the zeros. There they are. Uh, so how many times does three go into 18? Well, it goes in six times. So that's what we'll do. We'll go in once, go in six times there. So therefore, this will be equal to pi over, and in this case, it is six 
radians. So again, the zeros can cancel out. How many times does six go into 18? Well, of course it goes in three times. So one, three, and this is equal to pi over three radians. Now we need to go and convert the radians that I've listed here into degrees. So this is where we flip that little uh, pi and 180 the other way around. So once again, I will go and simplify using some cross cancelling so I don't have a terribly difficult uh, multiplication to do. So the pi's will cancel out. 3 goes into 180 60 times. So therefore, 2 times 60, make that 120 degrees. 0 0.9 pi. Now, for those who love their decimals, I have to tell you, and I have to offend you, but I much prefer to make this into a fraction because I can do cross-canceling a little easier. So where it says 0 0.9 pi, I'm going to turn that into 9 tenths. So this is 9 tenths pi, or 9 pi over 10, and I'm going to times it by 180 over pi. Once again, I'm going to cancel out those pi's there. I'm going to cancel out the zero here and the zero there. And so my multiplication just needs to be nine times 18. So how can I do that mentally? Well, 10 times 18 will be 180. So and so nine times will be 18 less than that. So 180 take away 18, well 180 take away 10 is 170. Take away another eight, should be 162. In this topic, we're going to use a thing called the unit circle a lot. Now, funnily enough, you've already seen this before when we dealt with different kinds of graphs. And this uh, unit circle is essentially just a circular graph. Uh, and particularly, it's the graph with equation x squared plus y squared equals one. Now, this particular graph has rather curious properties. And the curious property is that the points along the curve relate to sine, cos, and in a way, tan. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The first things first is we just need to know how to read it. When you're looking at a unit circle, you actually look at it and start by reading from, and I'll get my little highlighter here, this side here. And what we do is we read the angles inside the circle starting from this point. And in fact, it follows this pattern that we read the angles in a circle starting with quadrant one, then quadrant two, quadrant three, and then quadrant four. So this angle here that I've just demonstrated with my arrow, well, this between here and the, or between the x-axis and the y-axis, this is 90 degrees. So uh, in uh, radians, 90 degrees. So if I had 90 times by pi over 180, well, 90 goes into 180 twice. So this will be equals to pi over two. In case you missed that little Cancelling there, I did one there, goes into two there, it's equal to pi over two. Then you might remember from the animation that I played earlier that the full distance here, so we kept going over here, well, this is pi radians, that angle in there, that full angle. So by that logic, if we keep counting, if I go all the way down to this angle here, then that's going to be 3 pi on 2, because pi on 2 plus another pi on 2 is pi. Pi plus another pi on 2 is 3 pi on 2. And then we go back to the start. So we usually start by saying it's 0 and finish saying it's 2 pi. So that's how we go and read the angles in a unit circle.
In this problem, what we need to do is go and put these particular angles inside this unit circle and what they look like. For accuracy, I'm also going to use my protractor function on drawboard to be able to see what it looks like. What I'm going to do, just whilst we've still got the training wheels on radians, is just convert each of these into some manner of degrees. So you can see kind of what it looks like. So pi on 3, probably the only first thing we can say about pi on 3 is it must be smaller than pi on 2, because a third is smaller than a half. So I'm just going to go and multiply this by 180 over pi. And that's going to be equal to 60 degrees. Pi on 4, do the same thing. And hopefully you might remember that I converted this particular angle earlier in this video. So that's 45 degrees. Pi on 6, well that was 30 degrees. 4 pi on 3, so if we cancel out the pi's here, we'll cancel out this 3 and this 180. So that's going to, 3 goes into 180 60 times. So that's going to be equal to 240 degrees, because 4 times 60 is 240. 5 pi on 6 times by 180 over pi, well that's going to be equal to, so we can cancel those pi's, cancel that 6 and 180, and that will go in 30 times, so this will be 150 degrees. And then we've got negative pi on 4. So this is going to be an interesting one to plot. What do we do with a negative angle? So cross those pi's out. And that's just going to make that negative 1. And so, and 4 into 180, does that go quite nicely? Well, let's see. 4 goes into 18 4 times and 2 remainder. 4 goes into 20 five times, so yes it does. So this will actually be equal to negative 45 degrees. So now it's time to plot all of these angles into the unit circle. And there's pi on 3. The next one I'm going to do is 45 degrees. Now pi on 4 will be smaller than uh, pi on 3 because a quarter is smaller than a third and also smaller than a half. And 45 degrees is smaller than 60 degrees. There's pi on 4. And now it's time to get pi on 6, which is 30 degrees, which will be even smaller. And there's pi on 6. So now it's time to plot the other angles, starting with 4 pi on 3, which is 240. And now it's time for 5 pi on 6. Uh, and now negative 45 degrees. So to demonstrate a negative, you'll notice we've been going all in the same anti-clockwise direction. To indicate negative, we go in the clockwise direction. And there's negative pi on 4. 